All right, folks. Holy smokes, we're back. <laughs> All right, so listen. Um, you have probably noticed by the name of this post and of this video that we're going to be talking about. Now, don't shoot me. Don't shoot me yet. This is regarding GDPR compliance. It's very interesting, Jess, as I'm out there looking on social media, I'm seeing songs and mm. social media memes <laughs> say, basically, if I hear one more thing about GDPR, I'm going to put a bullet in your head or I'm going to choke <laughs> you out or I'm going to push you off a cliff, whatever it is. But folks, listen to me. <laughs> about 10 days ago, two weeks ago, um, my dear friend, Jessica Eves Matthews, one of the most brilliant women that I know, um, who is not only a rock star, world-class attorney who deals with, um, you know, helping entrepreneurs like you and me stay out of trouble. Um, um, I had her on because we were talking about this whole GDPR compliance thing. Now you may be thinking, I don't even know what that is. Good. You're in the right place. <laughs> now, Okay. This is why we're doing this. Yeah. And then there are others of you who have heard GDPR compliance and you're still kicking the can down the road. There was a deadline back on May 25th that we here in the U S if you are a business owner need to be GDPR compliant. Again, hang in there with me for a second. You're saying, what the heck is this? We're going to get there. But I know that many of you are still kicking the can down the road. Mm -hmm. um, I had one of my mentoring clients just a couple of days tell me that she was at a Chamber of Commerce meeting a couple of days ago or a few days ago, and she brought up GDPR compliance, and she got this, <laughs> the blank stare, like, what are you talking about? So there are still a lot of businesses. Now, there are a lot of us who are getting sick of hearing about it, but there are still a lot of businesses who don't know anything about this. We're going to help you uh, today, or Jess is going to help you. Jessica and I have known each other for a long time. Um, she's been practicing law for well over 20, I shouldn't say well over, over 20 years, maybe under 25 years <laughs> uh, at this point, and has worked with some of the uh, business world's absolute rock stars and billionaires. In fact, she led uh, litigation and compliance with uh, folks like Richard Allen, you know, the co-founder of Microsoft. Paul Allen. I'm sorry. <laughs> what did I say? Who did I say? Richard. Rich, Richard. Who's Richard Allen? I don't even know her. Oh, I do know her. Oh, Richard yeah, Allen. I don't know who I that is. Sorry, Richard Allen. <laughs> He's a friend of mine. Paul Allen. Thank you. Big art collector, uh, mm -hmm. by, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. uh, by the way, side note. My, did I tell you when I was in Monaco uh, a few weeks ago, I was actually by... Paul Allen's house and so oh, I think you did mention Gold. that yeah I know it's uh, cool spectacular it's anyway um I just pulled the curtain back for our life you guys this is how Jess and I <laughs> communicate <laughs> yeah all right anyway you're so fancy I'm very fancy <laughs> 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 All right. So GDPR uh, compliance. So listen, I trust Jessica with uh, a lot of my legal matters. I trust her with my life. I would trust her with my kids. So folks, hang in there with us for a second, because Jessica spent a lot of time coaching and mentoring entrepreneurs. So she not only uses one side of the brain where she's this uh, great analytic uh, attorney, she's a very creative type, has launched several businesses on her own, all, with, not all, many have been successful. Uh, anybody who yeah, launches not all. businesses, not all, <laughs> not all. So like me, she has seen the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, understands the struggles that we have. Unlike a lot of attorneys, and I deal with a lot of attorneys, for folks who follow me, you know I've got a lot of businesses, do a lot of real estate stuff. Uh, there are a handful of attorneys who I would like spend time with. Like I would want them to negotiate deals with me because they're absolute pit bulls, but they're not people I would go out and have a drink with or have, have fun with. Yeah. Jessica is brilliant in that she can take these complex ideas boil them down to simplicity so that knuckleheads like me and some of you uh, will understand and get us to um, acceptable, reasonable compliance. Um, because as you folks know, there are a lot of attorneys who will just rack up the hours because when you rack up the hours, you rack up the dollars. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are business people too. And Jessica is here to help uh, simplify all of this. So Jessica, thank you for helping out uh, again on this. I've got some coaching clients and mentoring clients who I know still aren't compliant. Yeah. Um, I've got some uh, business associates, not in my business that I know still aren't compliant. I know there are people on this call who aren't. So thanks for helping out. And by the way, thanks for being in my life and just being a great friend. Oh, my pleasure. So, thank you. Know, you. Thanks so, for having me. Yeah. So a lot's happened in the last, since uh, May 25th, since this uh, GDPR compliant thing went into effect. But maybe we just ought to start with for those folks who are brave enough to listen to this, who haven't heard of this before, what yeah. the heck is GDPR? 
Yeah. Okay, let's start with the basics. Let's do, because I think, you know, some people won't have heard it before. And let me just, right. you know, do my disclaimer at the beginning that Larry right. and I are not trying to give you legal advice. This is just right. for informational and educational purposes. So, right. um, but it's important and we're trying to get the word out to as many people as we can. Yeah. So GDPR stands for General Data Protection Regulation. And it's been um, promulgated by the European Union, um, all of the... European countries that are in the EU uh, are subject to this regulation. And it was really brought about as an effort to um, enhance protection of personal data of European citizens. Right. And you know, this comes in the wake of all the data breaches we've seen with you know, the big multinational companies like Target and Home Depot. And um, I'm sure they have some in Europe of their own big data sure. breaches that we haven't heard about. Yeah. Um, but then also this thing that happened with Facebook recently and Cambridge Analytics and the scraping of personal data, not just from our, from our own uh, Facebook profiles, but also our friends and family, you know, the overreaching of these apps that took data we didn't even know was being taken and uh, potentially influenced the outcome of the Brexit vote in the UK and also our, you know, the election in the US. So um, this is a really serious issue. So the, the EU is really leading the charge on this. Yeah. I don't think they're the last ones that will. I think the U.S. is going to follow suit very shortly, and we can talk about that a little bit later yeah. in this discussion. But right. really, it's meant to protect um, the personal data of European Union citizens um, and also to give them more control over how their data is used and collected and um, whether or not it's collected and whether or not it can be stored. And so... Um, it's just, they get a lot more, there's a lot more transparency that's required to let people know how you are collecting and using and storing their data and they can opt out and you have to comply with their opt out if they so do. Some of the simple ways, Jess, that where you may not even think that you're, you're giving data, like mm -hmm. if you are the consumer or you're taking data is if you ask somebody to get on your email list or you sign up for someone's email list okay. or you're filling out an invoice and there's a little checkbox and you overlook the checkbox. There are so many ways that we give businesses permission to use data. And there are so many ways we as business owners collect data that the landscape is changing. It just was coincidental. Some of you heard this, if you were on the, the, uh, the call or the, saw the video that Jess and I did about 10 days ago, we were, coincidentally, we were both in Europe at the same time a few weeks ago. And um, there is a level of frustration in Europe. Um, it seems like they are much more vocal and willing to go to the streets about this kind of privacy stuff than we are. I hear people talk about it here all the time. They're frustrated with, with Facebook. In fact, I've got a couple of mentoring clients who won't even go on social media because the, their fear is big brother's watching. Well, guess what? Big brother has been watching. And it turns out <laughs> some of us are big brother. <laughs> yeah, it's everybody. Using it. And the, the, the landscape is changing. Absolutely. Um, so I think that, um, uh, this is one of the things that has kind of uh, pushed this um, pushed this initiative. Would you, do you yeah. agree with that, or do you think I'm I way off base on it? Completely agree with that. And and the GDPR is it just went into effect recently on the 25th of May, but it was put, it was passed in 2016. Well, the enforcement so, of it just started. The enforcement on just started, and so it's it's officially in effect now, and and yeah. being you know potentially being enforced as we speak. Yeah. Um, and so European citizens have known about this for a couple of years. I mean, the yeah. people in the U.S. and Canada are really behind the eight ball. Like, I think people just started listening to the issue maybe two weeks ago at the earliest, except right. for some of the bigger companies. Right. Um, and so they've had a lot of time to think about it and to understand what it is and to get in compliance. And so they're, gonna, they're not going to be real patient with companies that are careless with their data. All right, so what? So speaking of that, they're not going to be, you know, patient with people who are careless. What is it that they're actually regulating? Yeah, so they're regulating. Um, it's under the under the regulation. It's described as processing information, which is what most of us are falling into that category. There's, yeah. there's also controlling information, but that really has more to do with um, big data processors, um, okay. including Facebook and companies like that. Okay. But if you're a small business owner and um, you, as you mentioned, if you collect email addresses, for example, or any other type of personal information from people who are visiting your website, um, you're collecting personal data. And so if mm -hmm. EU citizens happen to come to your website, um, you're collecting data of EU citizens, and so you fall within the regulation. If your website uses cookies, which they all do, um, I don't think there's any platform in the world anymore that doesn't use some form of cookies. Yeah. Uh, you are automatically harvesting personally identifying information from people visiting your website, even if it's not their name and email address, 
It involves even their geographic location and their IP address. Mm. And, um, and so that is personally identifiable information as well. Mm. And, um, and also if you, um, you know, if you're doing business with them, if they're buying something from you, clearly you're collecting personal data. Um, but even if you're doing uh, Facebook ads, pixels, retargeted marketing campaigns, all of that monitors the online activity of people who yeah. visit your website and then go to social media sites. And, um, and obviously that involves the use of cookies. Uh, but if you're engaged in that type of advertising, uh, it's possible that EU citizens are also getting caught up in that phishing net. And yeah. so all of those different categories are under the definition of processing yep. uh, for purposes of the regulation. So if you do any of those things, um, then you are under the, under the, um, the regulation of the, G the GDPR. Yeah. And that doesn't just mean, I just want to like get a little more specific on this. This is not just the targets of the world. This is not just the auto dealership of the world. These are like solopreneurs too. If you're giving away a white paper, if you're a coach or a, right a mentor or um, you know, have a barber shop and you and you uh, have videos of the cool trends and you happen to have people stumbling on your website from the UK or EU, right. there's a possibility. So who is it? You mentioned, you used the word citizens, EU citizens. Is that yeah. really who's impacted yeah. by this or is it residents? Could it be military service members who are serving yeah. in the EU or who yeah. are serving I sites think, here? I think it remains. Who does this apply to and why does yeah. it apply to me? It, technically, I think that, I mean, for sure it applies to citizens, but I think that um, it remains to be seen how it's going to be enforced. And I think if somebody's living in the EU, mm -hmm. um, they could probably claim protection of the regulation, just like somebody living in the U.S., even if they're not a U.S. Right. citizen, if they're right. a permanent resident or have a green card. Or, you know, there's a lot of different variations of, of um, residency and citizenship in most mm -hmm. countries. And so um, I think that it's probably going to be applied broadly. Um, the other thing to understand, though, is that even um, here in the U.S., we have the Federal Trade Commission, which has been regulating data protection and data security for years. This is not a new issue in the U.S. Right. Um, and so even if you are in the U.S. or you're a U.S. citizen, you're going to be protected by the FTC rules, which I believe are going to actually get more strict in the wake of the GDPR. And there's a lot of talk out there that that's the direction the FTC is headed right now. Um, and so you're not going to be able to escape it. Like at this point, I don't, I think it becomes less important who's coming to your website, whose data you're collecting. I think that it's important to basically get into compliance with the GDPR because that is really what I'm reading out there. The experts are saying that the way the GDPR has been crafted and how they are, the requirements under that regulation are really going to become the de facto standard globally. Um, and so everybody's going to have to rise to that level. Um, and so I think we just, I think the better thing to think about is not, do I need to comply? Do I not need to comply? It's get into compliance as soon as you possibly can, because yes. this is just the beginning and more and more countries are going to require this level of um, transparency and control and um, disclosure and all of that kind of stuff that's required under the GDPR, which we can talk a little bit more about today. So you're feeling like now that GDPR is rolled out in EU, they start actually regulating and monitoring. FTC is going to say, yeah. not to be outdone, yeah. like it's working there, let's yeah. try it here. Yeah, and the FTC has historically enforced EU laws and vice versa. Oh, okay. and we, you We're know, trading we're, partners, for crying out loud. That's right, yeah. And so there's, um, you know, the, the, the FTC will actually um, most likely, I and mean, we haven't seen it, you know, in the wild yet, but I, you know, I think that it's likely that the FTC is going to um, very willingly enforce these rules against U.S. citizens um, because they do have an agreement. And, you know, under the Privacy Shield um, framework, which has been around for years, which really does have to do with data and privacy issues, but it's, it really governs large multinational corporations. Um, they've already been cooperating and working together to enforce violations of of data and privacy rules. And so I think that we have to expect that the FTC um, is actually gonna be enforcing the GDPR as well, not just uh, US rules. All right, so Jess, they start enforcing this. What happens if we don't comply with regulations? I mean, I'm assuming there aren't jack booted GDPR police who are gonna kick in our <laughs> doors in the middle of the night. <laughs> doing a raid on your business a raid on my business or <laughs> but what yeah, are no, you gonna do what it's gonna look like it well it's two, it's twofold actually I think it's threefold I mean mm -hmm. as, as I've had time to really dig into this and research it and read 
expert opinions on this, um, yeah. it's really going to happen one of three ways. One right. is if you are doing business with people in the EU, you're squarely within the jurisdiction of the GDPR and the EU will directly come after you. They don't need an intermediary to do that. Okay. Um, if you're in the US and you're inadvertently, you know, collecting data of people in the EU because they're visiting your website or signing up for your email list and you're not geo blocking them um, from your website, which no. um, interesting point, uh, some companies have actually been doing that. I don't know if you've seen that, yeah. but in this last week, some really large media companies have decided to put up a, basically a firewall and not let people in the EU access their websites um, because they weren't in compliance yet. And so um, I think that is super interesting because that is a solution if you can geo block people from the EU, but why would you do that? In today's global economy, I think that's short sighted. Very. Um, so then obviously we're looking at the FTC enforcing the rules here as well. But the third way that it's gonna be enforced, and this is probably the most likely <clears throat> way that will be enforced for most people that we're talking to right now, mm -hmm. um, is that what, what's going to happen is you're going to end up not having your website be GDPR compliant and you're going to end up collecting data from an EU citizen uh, and they're going to get angry at how you're using their data and they're going to report you. Yeah. Um, and under the, st under the regulation, they can actually bring private civil lawsuits against businesses for violating their rights under the GDPR as well. And so um, they could report you to the enforcing authority, either in the EU or to the FTC, um, or, but they could just also bring a private lawsuit if the damages are big enough. So um, there's, you know, there's three different bodies, the FTC, the EU, and then individual citizens that could potentially be enforcing these rules. So you really need to get serious about this right. because you're not safe on any of those fronts. And those damages and fines can build up pretty quickly, right? They're huge. Under the statute, under the regulation, um, the maximum fine is 20 million euros, which um, is a lot more in US, um, or 4% of your global net revenue for the previous fiscal year, which for a multinational company could be huge. Like we talked about this last time, but amazon.com, I think their global net revenue um, in 2017 was something like 187 billion, um, which means their fine, the 4% under the GDPR would be 7 billion per violation. And, but the thing you have to understand is that a violation is sending one email in violation of the GDPR. So if you have a list of 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 people, those are 10,000 violations or 100 violations. Every yeah. email is a violation in and of itself. So yeah. the fines can add up really quickly. And so even if you're a small business, you like the likelihood of getting hit with a 20 million euro fine is unlikely, but you could get hit with a multi-thousand dollar fine or a fine in the oh. tens of thousands of dollars. Um, and, you know, I'm reading, like, even in Europe, uh, Germany already started an investigation against 500, what they're calling micro businesses on these very issues. Now, this started in November before the regulation was actually enforced, which, yeah. gosh, what are they, I mean, and Germany is known for being quite strict in enforcing privacy and data protection yeah. rules. Um, but they have already, and those weren't big businesses. And that's a lot, like 500 businesses ended up in, under investigation starting in November yeah. in Germany. Well, and, and then even if they don't, when you have to take the time and energy to fight the darn thing. So micro businesses, let's make an assumption. Yeah. Most businesses in the US, these small mom and pops never do a million dollars. So let's say it's $500,000 and you send you out an email campaign and you have two EU people who actually, well, one that complains, they do an investigation and there's two, right? Right. right. Holy smokes. I don't know a lot of people who have 40 or $80,000 if they're running a small business where they can just pay out a fine plus the legal fees to actually go through the process. Protect yourself and just the distraction from your business, right? And the energy and the stress and, um, you know, I, it's just, why would anybody, to me, ignoring this, and by the way, ignorance of the law is no excuse. Um, <laughs> that's not going to fly. If somebody, the attorney, <laughs> yes. <laughs> especially after, you know, all the memes and everything that are out there, like how could you not know what GDPR is at this point? Right. But, um, or at least be curious about what it is and Google it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so ignorance is not, is not an excuse, but I, I think that, uh, you know, why would you, to me, it's a form of self-sabotage as a business owner. This is where I put my coaching hat on. I mean, anytime yeah. somebody doesn't take care of the legal foundation in their business, it's a form of self-sabotage. I totally agree. So, Do you think there's going to be insurance 
riders now that are going to be attached. Like right now, you got E and O insurance, you know, errors and omissions insurance. Yeah. You got uh, employment practices liability insurance. Is there going to be a GDPR? Maybe I don't know because to me, this is sort of um, uh, wild west a little bit. It's it new is territory. A little bit of a wild. I mean, I could see you know an insurance company seeing an opportunity to monetize mm -hmm. this situation, and so mm -hmm. I wouldn't I wouldn't say no. It's unlikely, yeah. uh, but but it is a situation that. Um, involves sort of willfully ignoring the law. So like yeah. insurance generally doesn't, doesn't cover malfeasance or bad acts. As no, because what's going to happen is if you try to, get, let, let's just work, let's play through this just for a second. And this will show how my business brain works. Um, is that if, you, if an insurance company is going to say, yeah, we will uh, do these new riders um, or we'll come up with GDPR insurance, they are going to, they are going to force you to comply because they don't <laughs> want to pay it, pay it out. Right. Exactly. So either by hook or by crook. That's right. You're gonna have to get. That's the perfect way to describe it. Like there's just it's like there's nowhere to hide. Like just yeah. if we if if we haven't convinced you, then I don't know what will convince you. You just got to take this seriously. Yeah. Um, because it really could become a really big problem. Well, I like your self sabotage thing. You know, one of the things that you know, you and I have both talked about this. We've worked with each other in the past and talked to you know, rooms of entrepreneurs together. We've spoken from the same stage. Yeah. We both said, listen, if you can't afford accounting services when you're setting up your business, if you can't afford to form a legal entity, mm -hmm. um, then you can't afford to be in business. That's the hard thing. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just being brutally honest right. with, with folks. Because when you start employing people or you start taking care of your family, right. um, why would you risk it when all of it, it's going to take, yes, it's going to take a little effort. It is, it is. But mm -hmm. Jessica's, um, uh, going to be suggesting some, offering you something here. It's going to really make your life a whole lot easier. So you don't have to go out and start from scratch. A lot of people are like me yeah. where you're a maximizer. You want somebody to start the process and then yeah. you just take it and get it across the finish line. Yeah. That's what we're going to be talking about here in a second. Right. So don't, don't fret. You're not going to be sent out onto the, the battlefield unarmed. <laughs> we're not, um, yeah, we're not going to make you go read a 200 page regulation no, and figure it no, out. Okay. No. And that's one of the things I really yeah. love about what you've done here, Jess, with your GDPR compliance pack is that you're, you're arming people with just either you can take it if you're a solopreneur or you can hand it off to like what I did mm -hmm. um, to our VP of marketing and our CFO and our IT team and said, okay, go work with all of our outsourced folks. Yeah. Um, our email campaigns, all of our data collectors, because we have property management systems, we have credit card processing, we have all kinds of things that we need to right. make sure where we collect data, right? right. Um, and so if, but even if I, what I love about this, I could do it. I wouldn't want to do it, but yeah. I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's easy. Yeah, exactly. It is. It is. It's, it's it is. easy to do it yourself. And that's the thing because there's so much conflicting information. And, yeah. and I know other lawyers that have gone out there and have put together um, you know, help and Facebook groups, but they're just overwhelming people with information to the point where people are paralyzed. Exactly. I, and I didn't want to do that. There's no point. You just need to know like the, like the basics of how to get in compliance quickly. You don't need to understand, you know, we, we don't need to have a bunch of esoteric philosophical conversations about the policy behind the law and all the different nuances. Um, obviously, if you are concerned that you are in a unique situation, you do need to consult with somebody who's a GDPR of expert. Of course. But the, the packet for me was what I really came about because I sat down to do my own GDPR compliance and realized that I had been sort of asleep at the wheel, not informing my own community about the importance of this. Yes. And so I literally sat down and said, how can I make this as easy as possible for the people in my community to get in compliance? Partly because I felt guilty that I hadn't given anybody enough warning to, um, to really take care of me it. Too. In yeah, a me too. Way. Yeah. All right. So what do we do now? Now that, you know, I think we've kind of beaten this horse. Yeah. Um, what do we do in the next week to get compliant? Yeah. What, well, what, what um, the, the compliance packet that I put together will really simplify it because um, there are certain things that you need to do now that we're past the deadline. The deadline was May 25th. So literally everybody listening to this, if you didn't take care of it, you are in violation of the regulation right this moment. Yeah. So you're sitting at risk of fines and, um, you know, enforcement action and potentially consumer complaints. Yeah. So, um, you don't want to drag this out. And, you know, unfortunately, Larry, you and I both know a lot of people who are in business really take you know, un unreasonable risk with their businesses by not getting the legal in place. Right. But this is something that um, really could come back to bite you in a big way. So, mm -hmm. so 
there are some things that you need to do. One of the things you need to look at is your privacy policy. Yeah. Your privacy policy needs to be revised. That's why everybody's seeing all of those emails um, because everybody has to do this. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you have to do, you have to update. Yeah, if you're policy. wondering why you're getting or got last week hundreds of emails from people you haven't heard from forever, yeah. for some program you signed up for, some supplement you bought yeah. you know, three years ago, yeah, this is, that's this why. Is yeah, why. they have to do it and you have to do it. And so you've got to update your privacy policy and then you also have to notify um, your community that you've done that. So you need to send an email out to your list. Um, ideally, you want to have actually a notice on your website that tells people your privacy policy has been updated and they have to acknowledge that like with a checkbox or something. Um, but at, at the very least, send out an email to your list that you've updated it. Um, and, and then the other thing is, is the process of how you actually collect information has to change. And that's probably the biggest impact. The privacy policy in the packet that I put together, I drafted one that, um, you know, I used the guidance from the EU, from the regulation itself to make sure that it had the right language in it. Um, and so that's something that's plug and play. I mean, you can just put that on your website. You have to make sure that you are adhering to the terms of that privacy policy, yeah. because if you're not, the FTC can come after you for, misleading the public um, and not complying with those privacy terms. But, um, but assuming that you read it and you understand what it says and you're actually complying yeah. with it, then use my template. Um, but it'll be easy to edit as well. I've made it, I, you know, it's a Word document. So you can, you can add language or take language out if it doesn't apply to your business. Yeah. Um, but so that's, that's the first thing and you absolutely need to get that done as soon as possible. Next thing though, is to deal with your opt-in process. And I, I've been joking this last week that basically the GDPR just broke everybody's sales funnels yeah. because everybody's got, you know, that seems like that's like the big thing these days is to have a sales funnel, which really all it is, is driving traffic to your website and then having a free offer or a lead magnet um, of some kind of free report, a webinar or something that you basically give in exchange for people's email um, address and first name usually. Yeah. And um, that exchange can no longer happen under the GDPR uh, because what we've normally done, all of us have been taught when you're doing um, internet based marketing for your business, um, that as soon as somebody opts in for your freebie, then you can add them to your general marketing email list. And that is now a violation of the GDPR. You cannot yeah. do that. And so you're going to have to change how you approach these lead magnets and free offers that you were using as a carrot to get people to sign up for your email list. And basically what you need to do is you need to separate out the delivery of the free thing from um, permission to add, you, add them to your general marketing list. So the, the simplest way to do that is if you have an opt-in box, and by the way, I have a private Facebook group. So if you buy the packet, yes, that's, that's you get important. added to that's the important. Facebook group. Yeah, and I've got examples in there so you can see what is going to work and what isn't. Because I've actually been trolling the internet looking at like big you know, entrepreneurs um, in the coaching space, yeah. for example, who are not still not in compliance. Mm -hmm. Multi-million dollar entrepreneurs that for some, I, I just want to go say, your lawyer is failing you. Please talk yeah. to me. Um, yeah because they're at huge risk because they've got deep pockets and um, a lot of people on their lists. Um, but you cannot um, basically bundle together anymore um, the, the request for the free thing with the requirement that in order to get the free thing, they have to agree to be on your list. So you have to break those apart in your opt-in box. So you, you can still take their name and email address and deliver the freebie, but under the GDPR, you also have to give them the ability to opt in or out of your general marketing email list. Right. So you have to have a separate checkbox or something in that opt-in box that gives them the option to sign up for your email list, but also gives them the option not to. And so some people have used a checkbox in the past already that says something like, yes, sign me up for your newsletter and free offers or whatever. Um, but usually it's checked like by default, when you pull up the opt-in box, that box already has a check in it. That in and of itself is a violation of the regulation. So you it has to be an affirmative opt-in. That's right. I think what they call it. Is that, is that right? Affirmative action. Yeah. yeah have, affirmative action. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Yeah. You have to leave the box empty so that the person can check it. Um, and if they don't check it, then if, if they go ahead and sign up for your freebie, the only thing you can do with their information is deliver the freebie and then you have to delete them from your database. Because as I mentioned under um, the regulation, part of processing data involves storing it. 
So you can't even keep their information in your email database if they haven't given you permission. Um, so it's it, you repeat that one more time because I just yeah. had this conversation with somebody. What, what is today? Today's Thursday. 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 On Tuesday, I just had this conversation with somebody. Say that. Say that last one again. Yeah. So you have to like with the opt-in box. If you're giving somebody a freebie, and you have that separate, um, you know, statement, you can't bundle the, the delivery of the freebie with putting them on your general email list anymore. So. If they don't check the box opting into your general email marketing list, but they do hit submit to get the freebie because you can no longer condition delivery of the freebie on them checking that box. So they can still request the freebie with, and they can opt out of your general email marketing list. So if they, by not checking the box. So yes. if that's what they do, the only thing you could do with their data under the GDPR is deliver the freebie. And the only thing you can do is deliver the freebie. Sorry. And then, that's okay. Um, the only thing you can do is de <laughs> deliver the freebie and then you have to delete them from your um, email database. Like you can't even store the information on your database. That, that in and of itself yeah. is a violation of the regulation without consent. And it's not just the freebies. Just because someone's purchased something from you, it doesn't, it's the same thing, right? right? That's right. So, um, yeah, I, let, me, let me just address that really quickly because there – under the GDPR, you have to have what's called a lawful basis for collecting um, and storing and using people's personal data. And, um, and so one of the main ways that most of the people listening are going to have that lawful basis is through con explicit consent. And so that's right. what happens when you have the opt-in box. The other way that you can get permission to use somebody's personal data from the EU is if you engage in a contract with them. So if they purchase a product or service from you, right you've engaged in a contract. So as a lawyer, if somebody engages me as a lawyer and we, they sign an engagement agreement or even prior to signing the engagement agreement, if they ask me for a proposal, implicit under that section of the law, I have the right to communicate with them in order to deliver the proposal. And then if they accept the proposal, then I can communicate to get them to sign the engagement agreement. Then I can communicate with them to deliver the services under the contract but I cannot add them to my general marketing email list. And once the services are complete, I have to delete them from my database. They cannot, I cannot keep marketing to them unless I get their explicit permission. So if you're smart, so important. just delete them. You have to. Yeah, you have right. to, unless you get like, you can actually, and this is something we talk about in the Facebook group is ways to get people to opt in Yeah, yeah. Um, because that's, it's really going to become a test of your, marketing and sales ability to convince people of the benefits of signing up for your email list because yeah. um, they don't have to do it now in order to get the freebie. So going forward, you're going to have to fix your funnel yes. um, because you're either going to want to just get rid of the lead magnet altogether and just get really clear about the fact that you're just asking for people's email address to market to them. Or you're going to have to sell people on the goodies that people get for being on your email list that maybe yeah. are exclusive only to the email list. But in that, you have to disclose that they will be getting marketing emails. If yeah. you don't use that language or something to that effect, like you're going to give them offers, you're going to tell them about your new programs, it has to be implicit or very clear in the statement that they're going to be marketed to. Yeah. If that language isn't in there, you cannot add them to your general email marketing list. I just had a conversation on Tuesday with a martial arts studio owner. She has one studio. Um, it's here in California. She and so I was having a conversation with her about this. She goes, "But I don't, I don't have any EU students who come here." Um, yeah. And I said, "Okay, but you were just in EU last year competing. Um, I think she was at a, I don't know, Manchester maybe at a martial arts tournament last year. She met people, got business cards, and she sends out e so through some questions. Yeah, she oh. put them on her email list." Because yeah. we're friends, right? Yeah. They're not going to report me, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, you know where I'm leading with this, right? Mm -hmm. And so even though they're not opting in, she's putting people that she's met from the EU on her email list and, yeah. and doing you know, her newsletter to her local, what she thinks is her local, mm -hmm. um, what do you call it? Her local clients and, and followers. Yeah. Local nowadays, folks, we're in an international global economy and society. Yeah. Right. You know, we got to forget about these. Yeah, we have borders for sure. But when it comes to commerce, yeah, anybody can stumble on your website. That's and again, right. If you're collecting cook, if you have cookies, mm -hmm. you're collecting cookies, all of this stuff. So, yeah, I would just say, if you have a business, and whether it's a solopreneur, 
LLC, S Corp, C Corp, whatever it is, whatever it is, get GD, GDPR compliant. It's just, yeah. you're, I don't want to yeah. call you an imbecile, but <laughs> you're an imbecile if you don't. Well, and as we mentioned, this is just the beginning. And so just get it done because like the FTC is going to follow up and the rule, the rules in the U S are going to change soon. Sure. And um, so you don't want to mess around with this. And as you say, you don't know if somebody from the EU is visiting your website. And um, by the way, if you go to an event and this is like something that I've talked about for years, this has little to do with the GDPR, but now it's even more important. Like if you go to an event and collect business cards and you don't ask permission to put people on your email right. list, you start right. emailing them, that's a violation of the Can Spam Act here in the US. Yeah. And so that's the other thing that we're gonna be talking about in my Facebook group. I'm expanding it beyond GDPR to talk about FTC enforcement and the Can Spam Act because they all intersect. They sure do. And you have to be in compliance with all of them. So be careful to not do that. Like I always say, if you're at a live event and you're collecting business cards, literally ask the person right there can I add you to my email list? And if they say yes, put just get your pen and put Y or something on the business card so you know that they gave you permission and keep those business cards as a record so yeah. if you ever get challenged because you, that is a bad form. Like I know people also go on Facebook and collect email addresses or LinkedIn. And if they didn't give you explicit consent, that's not yeah. just a problem with the GDPR. That's going to be a problem in the U.S. under U.S. law. Yeah, yeah. All right, so folks, uh, we're gonna have a link in the description of this video where you can uh, get a very value-driven, um, awesome-filled uh, GDPR, GDPR compliant pack that um, that Jessica Eves Matthews has put together. And I hope that you've got a little bit of value uh, out of this. I think you probably got a lot of value if you've actually stuck around. So. Um, Jess, anything else? Oh, and by the way, do it. Go <laughs> click on the link. Sign up for her uh, this, this packet. Um, we've had a lot of people who did it just from the last time. Congratulations yeah. to those folks who did. Yeah. And um, so many of them said this was absolutely worth it. Thanks for simplifying this thing. Mm -hmm. The Facebook group alone, I think is not alone, but I think the Facebook group in concert is going to be good because like any new regulation, things yeah. change once right. it's actually implemented. And Jess is going to keep you up to date uh, on that kind of stuff. And that's been a great group. We've been in there. People have been asking questions and we yeah. like, it's been a really good conversation in that group. I actually yeah. think there's a lot of great information growing in there and mm -hmm. I'll just, you're going to be able to ask me questions directly in there. So right. it's a good yeah. place to be. So follow the link that's in this post um, to get that GDPR compliance back. Uh, Jess, anything else before we wrap up? That's it. I'm just with you. Like if, if you are working so hard to build your business yeah. and you are, you know, hopefully going to be relying on it to support your family and potentially employees or contractors, yeah. um, you know, why would you risk all of that hard work to me? Don't, don't engage in that kind of self-sabotage because that's really what yeah. it is. Make yeah. sure that you, you know, behave like a real B, you know, real CEO, real business owner and do what you need to do. This is painless. Honestly. I mean, the pack yeah. is 150 bucks. It's, it's like, less than an hour of my time as a lawyer yeah. and um, you're not going to find this anywhere else to get that kind of value. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> to me, it's a no brainer. I tried to price it so that it's a no brainer for people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So just, just do it and, and take care of yourself and your, and not just your business, but your, your personal assets as well. You don't want to exactly. put yourself at risk. Yeah. As I said, I, early on, I started this thing, but I, I trust Jess with a lot of my legal matters. Um, She's a dear friend. Just if you trust me, trust her, please. It's 150 bucks for this GDPR compliance pack. I'll follow the link. Jess, thank you so much. This is awesome. Thank, thank you, you for having me. This yeah, is, sure. I, I so appreciate you having these conversations. Yeah, I feel like it's sure. such a great way to be of service to your community. And yeah. uh, I'm just really Good. appreciative to be here. Thank you. Good. All right. Well, we'll see you soon. All right, folks. As always, go do something significant today. All right. Go get them. Bye. Out. <laughs>